I want to talk about the apostolic fruit. Okay, we're talking about the fellowship, about the function of the apostle, and the apostolic fruit. And when we get down to verse 13, he said, Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among other Gentiles. I want to have fruit among you, just as other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. Paul has a heart for the world. How many of you have a heart for the world? To see the world saved. Huh? Are you passionate about that? Man, I tell you what, you need to lift up your eyes onto the harvest and see that the billions of souls need Jesus and they're waiting to be harvested and brought in. We did that men's conference yesterday, Pastor Tony and Friday, and you see men rising up, just even in that conference. We had three guys that did an amazing job putting that conference on, some other guys helping. Walking in a purpose. Now, I defy you guys that were working on the conference to tell me you didn't have a good time. You had a good time, didn't you? In fact, I know that it was one of the best days of your life. Right, David? It was one of the best days of your life. Why? Because you're walking in purpose and you're giving up. It's probably one of the most tiring days of your life. He went home with sore feet last night. You know, and he had to take a good rest. But, but it's one of the most fulfilling, happy, excited, passionate days in my life. Why? Because I'm doing something. I'm making that sacrifice. I'm not sitting on my sofa. I'm not sitting by the pool. If you, listen guys, if you can connect into this kind of a passionate purpose for the rest of your lives, you will forge ahead, charge ahead in the kingdom of God. And it won't be long and you'll be looking around and you'll be leading a whole army behind you. So people are looking for that. They're looking for a man, a woman, a purpose with passion for what God's called them to do. I just love being around passionate people. But you know what astounds me with this verse? Is the method or the plan of God, the apostolic plan of God, to see the harvest come in. Now, Paul didn't say that we should have a big open air crusade. He didn't even say that we should have an alpha course or we should do any of those kind of things. Those things are all good. But Paul is talking about a biblical apostolic method to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. And he says it this way. I do not want you to be unaware that I often plan to come to you that I might have some fruit among you just as among other Gentiles. Where is Paul going to bear fruit? In the church. Some of you question, and you say, and you hear things like, we've got to get this outside of the church. We keep it in the four walls of the church. The church is the hope of the world. And it's true, we've got to take it out of the church. But you're going to take it out of here when you're passionate. Paul says, the supernatural, passionate, Holy Spirit of God is going to be released through the church to the world. So it's going to be in the church. He says, I want to come and bear some fruit among you. Now listen to me. He's the apostle. He's never been to that church. The church is already looking like this. There's people sitting in here. And he says, I want to come and bear some fruit among you. And somebody said, well, why don't you go preach out there? That's where they need to hear it. You know what it isn't? Right here is where we need to hear it. This faith for the Great Commission comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. And the ministry gifts that God's put in the church. And you know, in Ephesians 4, look at, look at how he does it. Got to get me one of those digital Bibles. Actually, I have one in my pocket, but my wife won't let me use it. She just doesn't look right. I said, well, what if I got a leather cover for it? He gave... He himself, Jesus himself, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. What for? The equipping of the saints. What are the evangelists for? The equipping of the saints. What are the pastors for? The equipping of the saints. And we can understand the pastoral thing because he's going to take care of us. That's not what it is. Listen, guys, your pastor is not here to take care of you. He will take care of you and thank God for that. But you know how the pastoral gift equips the saints? You saw Pastor Andrew up here this morning. I tell you, I got equipped. 
I got equipped listening to that passion and the favor of God and the things that, that are happening. That's what, it, because I don't want to just be equipped to, to deal with the struggles and the woes of life. I want to be equipped for the impartation, the gift that God's put in my life. We got to rise up. Church is not here to meet our needs. It's here to become a channel for us to minister to the world. Where we can get fired up. We can get passioned up. Amen. And go out and do something. Because we can't help ourselves. And that comes through this process in Ephesians chapter 4 where the ministry gifts are given to the church for the edifying of the church of itself in love. That's the expansion of the church. The growth of the church. Let me tell you, England is not going to be saved if this church doesn't grow. It's not going to grow without that passion. And England's not going to be saved without the churches growing. Because this is the powerhouse. This is the place of passion where Jesus is going to release his love to the world. We're ready to go. Paul says, I must have fruit among you. I must bear fruit through you. Okay, and we see this five-fold ministry is the way that it happens. But you know what? It's easy to open a church. But it takes the power of God to plant one and grow one. You know, you can open something and call it a church. But I'll tell you what, it takes the power of God. It takes a passionate pastor, passionate evangelist, apostle, prophet, teacher. It takes passionate men and women of God to grow the church, to make it really work, to make it really reach the world. When the impartation, when the gift of God clicks in your life, when it makes a sense, when it settles into your heart, when it settles into your spirit, so that you live and you move and you have your being in that call and that purpose that Jesus Christ has put on your life, you won't be able to stop yourself from rising up if full of passion and going for doing whatever it takes to get done what needs to be done. It's the only thing you want to talk about. It's the only thing you want to live for. It's the only thing worth doing anything for. And when you do that, resources, favor, people will come pouring in on your lives. I tell you what, it makes a big difference.